So today I'm back out here working on the garden area. So this is our fenced in garden project. So we're trying to make a whole new garden area out here right next to our house. And it's gonna be a fenced in garden area. It'll be fenced completely around. And it will also, we're, as we're doing this, we're, we're building raised beds. And we're putting in raised beds all around the perimeter of this garden. So we're gonna have raised beds and fencing all around um, the sides of the garden. But in the middle of the garden, we're still going to plant uh, an earth garden. We'll, we'll still plant our plants directly in the ground. And this is kind of what this black plastic is for. It is to prepare the ground for us to be able to plant. So we put this black plastic on there. And hopefully this is going to kill off all the grass and the weeds that are underneath it. So we're doing this so that we don't have to use any harsh chemicals or we don't have to use uh, any big equipment like tillers to be able to break the ground up and... Um, so hopefully just putting this plastic on there and being patient since it's been on there for at least four weeks Hopefully there's no Grass or weeds still alive under there. I'm hoping that we'll pull that back and it'll just be a nice Layer of dirt and it'll be ready to plant So we'll go ahead. We're gonna take all the stuff that's that's on here uh, Holding this plastic down. We'll get this all cleared off. We're gonna pull this plastic over to the side over here We're gonna cover up the next section of grass so that we can kill off that next section. Hopefully when we pull this back, uh, we'll find nice uh, dirt under there and it'll be ready to go. So when I slid that black plastic off of here, um, it pretty much looks like it's all dirt now. So it's about 70%, I'd say, dirt. And there's about 30% where there's still some remnants of some grass there, but it's all dead grass. Uh, so I think this is good enough for me to plant on. I think if this black plastic would have been on there for probably another three weeks, you know, six to seven weeks total, there probably would be 100% dirt here. It probably would have, there wouldn't even be anything left of the, of the grass that's dead. Because uh, it does a pretty amazing job, uh, really, if you give it time. So, but I'm going to go ahead and get uh, planted today. Um, I'm behind on my garden as usual. Uh, this is the end of May. I should have had this planted uh, in the beginning of May. So I'm like four weeks behind on the garden. So what I'm going to do is we're going to actually use a, a weed barrier. So I used a weed fabric last year. I'm basically going to use the same fabric I did last year and then I bought some new fabric. And I've got it uh, all rolled up on the porch up there. So I'm going to go ahead. We'll show you the, uh, the fabric and how we're going to fasten it to the ground. So this is the fabric that I used last year. I got this rolled up here. I do have one more roll of it um, stored away. And uh, this fabric, as long as you kind of take care of it and like roll it up every year, kind of take care of it, it will last several years. Uh, I'm not sure you know what quality mine is. I'm, I'm gonna guess that this is probably a five year fabric or weed barrier that I have here. They actually have some of these weed barriers that are rated up to like 20 years. Uh, so there's some really high quality ones out there. Um, this is just a little bit of an, an investment, uh, but it saves you so much time in weeding. And if you take care of them, you know, you can use them for several years. So I think, you know, overall, they're kind of worth the time and effort and, and the money to put these in. It's just I think that can be a huge time saver for you in the end. So the fabric that I used last year already has holes uh, in it to be able to plant plants in it. And uh, one of these rolls has got a five foot spacing. Uh, and that's what I plant my peppers and tomatoes in. And uh, then I got another one here, it's got about an eight foot spacing. And then that's what I was planting like, uh, you know, spaghetti squash and pumpkins and the, kind of the plants that want to spread out. Uh, I was planting them eight feet apart in that fabric. What I got here is a brand new roll. This is a four foot wide roll back here. I think these I think they're about 300 foot long rolls when you buy them. 
So I'm going to use this one right here. I'm not going to burn any holes in it. I'm going to strictly use this for walkways. So I'm going to take this fabric. I'm going to put it down around the raised beds around the perimeter. So I have a walkway around the inside of the perimeter. And then um, I'm also going to lay this fabric out uh, in between my rows of plants and it's going to kind of overlap on top of this just a little bit so that I have a walkway in between my rows where there's no weeds going to grow. So basically I'm going to use a combination of these two and I'm just going to 100% cover that area with weed fabric. So we're going to roll this out in the garden we're going to staple it to the ground using like uh, landscape staples. So this is a typical landscape staple here. This is a botten landscape staple. I do have a few of these but uh, I personally just pretty much made most of my own. So if you do any type of fencing, a lot of times you have number nine wire laying around. And this is a landscape staple. You can tell it's not perfect. But this is just made out of number nine wire. Number nine wire is a, a, a thick galvanized wire. So this is galvanized. It should last several, several years. And it, if you compare the two of them, of course this one's got longer staple. But the diameter is also bigger as well. This is just way heavier duty of a staple. It's, it's just homemade and uh, you know there's not perfectly straight. But this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to staple this fabric down every five feet or so and uh, that'll keep that fabric down on the ground and keep the wind from from pulling it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Start open this package up. Start rolling out our fabric and uh, once we get it all down we'll finally be able to start putting our plants in the ground. Well, we got the weed barrier, we got this uh, weed fabric, we got it put on all the way across to where we had killed all the grass here in the garden. That pretty much covered about 50% of the garden area. So we ended up with enough uh, places to plant that we got all of our, uh, all of the tomatoes, peppers, everything that we had started, we got them all planted in the garden. I came up uh, four plants shy. So 
we did end up burning two new holes for plants in the fabric and then uh, we ended up planting the other two uh, last two tomato plants in that raised bed back there so that raised bed had uh, broccoli that was going to seed it was bolting so we pulled all the broccoli out of that raised bed right there and then we planted the last two tomato plants back there we also planted uh, some of the last we had some herbs left to plant and a little bit of lettuce left to plant back there and then that took care of 100% of our seed starts are in the ground now so super happy about that uh, everything that we have started from seed is now in the garden and planted um, the only thing we have left here in the to plant is going to be the things that we start from seed in the ground um, so the things we have left to start from seed in the ground are our sweet corn um, zucchini we're going to start in the ground this year and then uh, spaghetti squash I think those are three things that we have left to plant and uh, so we're gonna have to go ahead and get a few more rows of this row cover or this weed fabric we're gonna have to get a few more rows of that in so we can get that planted but uh, obviously you know the grass isn't dead under there um, I was really hoping I'd have enough room on this side to just get everything planted um, so I probably will end up maybe borrowing a tiller from my dad or something possibly and get a little bit of this tilled up and um, so that I can have everything you know kind of dead under there before I put my weed fabric on top of there um, I don't necessarily have to kill everything off but it would be a lot easier a lot better guarantee that I just won't have a bunch of weeds starting to grow up through where I plant my seeds but anyway super happy that we got this all done um, I think the next video that I do on this is gonna have to be the drip irrigation system so we're going to run a drip irrigation system down each one of these rows and have a dripper at each one of these plants. So right now I just need three tubes of drip irrigation. It's super, you can't really drag a hose through here and water these or you're going you're gonna to hit these plants with the hose and, and hurt them or break the plants off. Um, right now the, um, you know, the raised beds, I can walk along the outside and I can water everything from the outside of the garden. But here in the middle of the garden, it's a little bit harder. Um, this weed fabric, you know, does let moisture go through the weed fabric, but um, in the summertime it's going to be super dry and I'm going to need some way to water them. So we're going to set up a drip irrigation system here on, um, here in the earth garden portion. So that'll probably be the next video. But uh, super, super happy that I got everything planted. This is going to be like a totally uh, almost maintenance free garden. You can see that there's only like a little bitty hole where that plant is that's the only place that a plant that weeds can grow i might get a little bit trying to grow up right along the edges of the raised beds uh, but it should be pretty much a weedless garden should be super easy to maintain so, that's it for this video guys thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video